Hello and welcome to our daily devotion from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Adam Moline. Today we're going to take a look at the Gospel lesson appointed for the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany, which comes to us from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 8. When Jesus got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the seas, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of a man is this, that even winds and sea obey him? Thus far our text. Dear friends in Christ, that question at the end is a epiphany question. We're in that season of the church year, epiphany, when we examine who Jesus is and why he's come. God reveals to us in the word the realities, the answers of those questions. And it, in a sense, is the question that the apostles ask at the end of our gospel lesson. What sort of a man is this that even winds and sea obey him? They ask that question. It's written down for us by Matthew so that you might ask that same thing. What sort of a guy is it that can control the weather? It's not an ad average, ordinary person. It's someone special if they are able to control the weather. Not a single person can do that. Even as we try to lower our carbon emissions and plant more trees and hug them and things like that, we're not doing anything to actually control the weather. It is outside of our control. Only God can control the weather. Only God can decide where rain falls and where it doesn't. We see this throughout the Old Testament. The reason that the people of Israel went down into Egypt is because God had caused a famine. A famine which prevented it from raining for seven years. At the time of Elijah, again, there was a famine brought about by God to bring the people of Israel to repentance, to stop them from worshiping Baal. In the book of Jonah, we see Jonah trying to run away from God, and God stops him and the boat that he's in in its tracks with a huge storm. The sailors, superstitious, throw Jonah overboard as Jonah told them to, and at that very moment, the storm stops. God is in control of the weather, which means God has brought this storm in our gospel lesson. And the people, the apostles in the boat with Jesus, are actually under God's care in the midst of that storm. In fact, they have God with them in the boat. And Jesus gets up and proves the reality of who he is, God in the flesh, by rebuking the waves with his word. Dear friends in Christ, what sort of a man is Jesus? He is God. That's revealed in our gospel lesson. He is God, the same God who caused the famine in Joseph's day, the famine in Elijah's day, the storm in Jonah's day. In fact, all of those things in the Old Testament that were under God's control, Jesus proves he also has authority and power over them because he is the very Son of God. Now, what does this mean for you, dear friends in Christ? It means that you also are under God's care. Even as God causes terrifying things to take place around us, things that make us a little nervous and uncomfortable. Just like the apostles were uncomfortable and nervous in the boat as the storm was raging upon them, as the waves were coming over the gunnels, you also are under God's care. And at some point, God will bring all the terrifying things to an end by the power of his word. Now, I don't necessarily mean that all the storms we see going on around us, God's going to stand up and speak and stop them. But what I do mean is that at some point, God will bring this world to its end. 
and for you and for me and for all of those who have faith in Jesus Christ, when God brings this world to an end, he'll bring us to safety, to eternity, to peace and comfort, to a world that is remade perfect and holy. And there we will be in God's presence forever. In fact, we've already died to this world in the waters of holy baptism where we were attached to Jesus who died on the cross and who rose from the dead and lives and reigns world without end forever and ever. Amen. You already in your baptism are attached to that Jesus, which means you already have eternal life. In a sense, you've been brought safe through the waters, the storms, the dangers of this world already because you know where you will end up with Christ. There's a great hymn that my kids have been singing almost nonstop this entire season of Epiphany. I walk in danger all the way, but as I walk, the hymn comes to an end with the last verse, I'm going to be with Jesus. I'm going to be at peace. That's the reality for you and for me. That's the reality seen in our gospel lesson. Jesus is God, and we are in his care. In the name of Jesus, amen. <laughs>